आई एम योर फ्रेंड अमित एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न हाउ टू डिजाइन यूट्यूब वीडियो अपलोड सर्विस एंड दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द सीरीज सिस्टम डिजाइन विच वी हैव रिसेंटली स्टार्टेड एंड यू कैन फाइंड द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो सो लेट्स स्टार्ट एंड डिजाइन द यूट्यूब वीडियो अपलोड सर्विस नाउ एज वी ऑल नो डैट यूट्यूब इज अ वीडियो शेयरिंग प्लेटफॉर्म विथ मेनी फीचर्स and i have been continuously uploading videos on youtube to share my knowledge on software development with all of you today we are going to focus on the feature which is uploading a video and now let's discuss the functional and the non functional requirements under the functional requirement we have the following uploading the video with metadata like video title and video description and then we have updating the metadata of the video then uploading a custom thumbnail image for any video now the non functional requirement first is any video uploaded by a user should not be lost and then there should be no downtime at all users should be able to upload video at any point of time and the last one is the system should be scalable whenever required we should be able to scale our system to support upload by a huge number of users and now let's discuss what is out of scope of our system handle video duplication we will not consider this as a part of our design today video deletion deleting a video is out of the scope although it's a very small task now we can do the estimation part but for now i will leave this up to you to do the following storage estimation bandwidth estimation find these things and let me know your findings in the comment box we can discuss it for example you can estimate based on 1 billion total users and now let's see how our architecture will look like we have clients such as desktop or mobile whenever the client makes a request it will go to the load balancer first and then the load balancer will decide which application server will serve the request also i must mention that the load balancing should be done using the consistent hashing you can learn what is consistent hashing from our video that we have already published in this series you can find the link in the description below and then the application server will call the respective services based on what the client has requested for example here we have three services video upload video metadata thumbnail upload and then we have other components like processing queue video encoder thumbnail generator thumbnail resizer video and thumbnail storage cdn content delivery network and we also have a database to store video metadata information don't worry we will discuss each components in detail today let's talk about the database design now for this video upload service we only have video metadata to store for this we can go with the mysql database the video metadata table will look like this video id title of the video description of the video thumbnail path where the thumbnail is hosted video raw path where the raw video is hosted video path where the encoded converted video is hosted user id basically who has uploaded this video similarly we can design the user table with the information like user id name email and etc now let's discuss the api design first we need the api for uploading a video it will look like this upload video and this will be a multi part post request client will have to send these parameters in the request access token to identify the user video title video description video content which is a video file then we need another api for updating the metadata of the video it will look like this video metadata client will have to send these parameters in the request access token to identify the user video id id of the video for that we are going to update the metadata updated video title updated video description it will not have the video content in the request as we can't update the video very similar to what youtube does then we need another api for uploading the thumbnail of the video it will look like this upload thumbnail client will have to send these parameters in the request access token to identify the user video id id of the video for that we are going to upload the thumbnail 
thumbnail image which is a file that's it so these were the apis which we needed and now let's move to the next thing which is detailed discussion on components our first component is video uploading so whenever we get the video upload request we store the raw video file in the video storage and metadata like title description user id path of the raw video and etc in the video metadata table in the database then we put that in the processing queue for the encoding here we have our video encoders they will keep taking the videos from the processing queue based on its capacity here you can see that we have many encoders now let's understand why we need the encoders as we will have the users watching the video at different sets of locations on different types of devices such as mobile desktop television and all of them vary in their screen sizes with different internet speed some will have slow internet speed and some will have fast internet speed and we need to cater all of our users and provide the best user experience for that we need to convert our video into many different formats like high medium low quality and resolutions like 1080 720 480 so that we can provide the low quality video having the less data size to the users having slow internet speed and the best quality video having more data size to the users having the fast internet speed similarly we can provide the low resolution video for the devices having smaller screen sizes and high resolution for the devices having larger screen size so the conversion to the different formats and to the different resolutions are done by the encoder and this is a very very important task in our system encoder will be handling all of these when the encoder is done with its task it will store the video in the video storage and update the video metadata table with the video path then the encoder will ask the thumbnail generator to generate the thumbnail for the video and then it will go for the thumbnail resizer where it will get resized and then get stored in the thumbnail storage we will also update the video metadata table with the thumbnail path here we are resizing the thumbnail into the many different sizes so that we can provide the different resolution for the different devices now let's discuss the storage system we need to store video and thumbnail images we will be needing the following video storage thumbnail storage for the video we can go with the hdfs hadoop distributed file system which is a distributed file storage system and for the thumbnail we can go with the s3 bucket for now and then we finally put our content video and the thumbnail on cdn content delivery network so that the users should be able to access the content from their nearest data center with the lower latency and they will get the best user experience which is what we need now let's see the complete flow first the client makes the request it goes to the load balancer and then to the application server then either to the video upload video metadata or thumbnail upload service based on request if it is the video upload request we store the raw video file in the video storage and metadata like title description user id path of the raw video and etc in the video metadata table in the database then we put that in the processing queue for the encoding and after the encoding is done we store the videos in the video storage and update the video metadata table with the video path and then we also generate the thumbnail resize it and put that in the thumbnail storage and update the video metadata table with the thumbnail path if the request is for update video metadata we just simply update the database if the request is for the thumbnail upload we resize it and store in the thumbnail storage we will also update the video metadata table with the thumbnail path and then we finally put our content video and the thumbnail on cdn and that's it 
now let's discuss what more we can do here we can detect the video duplication there might be a case that the user is uploading the same video again for that we can use the block matching algorithm another thing which we can do here is we can also add the api for deleting a video and then we can also add a feature to send the notification to the client when everything is done like encoding thumbnail generation resizing and storing so these are the few things which we can do and now we know how to design the youtube video upload service so that's it for now please like share comment and subscribe to our channel see you in the next video